This video is going to be a look at the unbelievable impact that Minka Fitzpatrick had in the Steelers' 23-20 overtime win over the Bengals in Week 1. Of course, we know it was, that game could have very easily been over at the end of regulation. The Bengals tie it on a six-yard touchdown pass from Burrow to Jamar Chase, 20-20. And then the ensuing extra point, Minka Fitzpatrick blocks it. Great effort by him. Incredible commitment to his angle. A big miscue, if you ask me, by the left tight end for the Bengals' extra point team. Uh, and I'll show that here at the end. That's one of the two plays. Well, actually, three plays I'm going to show you. I think the, the Steelers' pass rush kind of sped up Joe Burrow's internal clock. And first of all, Burrow is you know, one of the best at making quick decisions, getting rid of the ball fast, uh, being willing to the, – the phrase dink and dunk you to death doesn't apply. That's not fair. He's, he's willing to hit – a bunch of singles and doubles on you, and eventually some of their playmakers hit a home run. I would I would liken Burrow to a guy in the in Major League Baseball who hits like 330 every year, hits a ton of doubles, and sometimes you know hits 30 home runs in a season. Sometimes hits 22, sometimes hits 38. He's just a guy who's consistent, gets rid of the ball quick, tries to make the right decisions, has the height and the release to get rid of the ball. Quickly and over top, over top of the O line and, and through um, you know pass lanes. I think the Steelers sped up his internal clock. We're going to start this film film study with um, one of the sacks. This one's by Cam Hayward, who's the right D tackle for the Steelers. He first misses Burrow, and then on second effort gets him. You'll get the end zone angle here in a moment. And I'm going to pull this back to the all 22. Here's Hayward lined up in a in a two eye or a one, whatever people want to call it. Not exactly the same thing, but he just overpowers the left guard. The Bengals' O-line had problems uh, across the board. Not every player, but there was definitely problems with Lel Collins against T.J. Watt. And uh, in this case, the left guard had trouble with Cam Hayward. But who doesn't? I mean, Cam Hayward at this point is a Hall of Fame player, if you ask me. All right, the uh, route that Burrow's looking for, surprise, surprise, is Jamar Chase right here. He's definitely reading over to the side. Jamar Chase actually runs an out. I drew that up a little wrong. And... Um, or he outside outside turns for the stop, and then Hayden Hurst is running out into the flats. Usually Burrow would immediately go to Hurst on this, but again, I think his internal clock is sped up. I think he's trying to throw to Chase on this little outside uh, outside turn stop, and normally, in my experience watching Joe Burrow, he would immediately go to Hurst, and he would hit Hurst, Hurst and just take whatever the defense gives him because uh, it is first and 10, and they have a couple more downs to play with. All right, so the very next play. Again, I think his internal clock's been sped up a little bit. Typically, I believe Burrow would have hit Hayden. Ravens fan watching this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about in a moment. In two read, what they're looking for is they're looking for an out by two and then a vertical by one and, you know, sometimes a post or whatever it is. What they're doing is the safety, fact Fitzpatrick in this case, and the corner would both be reading two. So as, as soon as two makes that out cut, then the corner is going to let one pass through, and he's going to take that over. If you remember as a Ravens fan, that's how Joe Hayden got a pick six against RG3 in Pittsburgh in 2020 in the game that Lamar did not play. And then simultaneous to that, the vertical route would be taken over by the safety. Essentially, he would be taking over the deep portion of the responsibility of the coverage. That's not what this is, though. This is not to read. I think that might be what Burrow was looking for because they're trying to throw this to, towards the sideline to the number two receiver. Fitzpatrick jumps it. He really rolls over the top of this heavy. Why? It's covered. It's Tampa 2 is what it is. First of all, this guy right here, this linebacker, Miles Jack, is going to be a huge asset for the Steelers. His speed and athleticism. Watch him. He looks at Burrow. Well, first of all, he reads pass, so he gets a, a pass read from the O-line. Then he sees which direction Burrow's looking, so he opens his hips and gets depth. So you've got your middle third player in the Tampa 2. There's your half-field player in Fitzpatrick, and then another half-field player in the other safety, number 34. These guys are playing flats with their butts to the sideline. The top side corner hasn't turned yet, but now you can see both of them with their, their back or their butt to the sideline, their face mask looking in at the quarterback. The route combination, number one on the end, number two. We would just call this smash in, really, to be honest with you. But it's it's not exactly smash, to be honest with you. Burrow, his internal clock, again, was sped up. And I think that's the whole point of playing multiple coverages and being able to get pass rush with only four guys, you know, generating that rush. Credit to Minka Fitzpatrick. This, this pick six helped the Steelers jump out to a big lead. But we know that the Bengals have too much talent to, uh, to, to lay down. So this is a weird sequence, the last... 
I think 34 seconds of the game, maybe maybe a little more than that, maybe 45 seconds, included five consecutive incomplete passes by Burrow, two penalties on the Steelers, one of them on Watt, and then one of them on Fitzpatrick for unnecessary roughness. At this point, Watt is out of the game. And a great job on this little speed out by Burrow. I mean, he watch when he throws this football. He throws it before Chase has even made his break at all. I'll pause it here. Look, Burrow's already got his arm cocked back. He's already, you know, looking to release the football. And Jamar Chase hasn't even, you know, made his break at all. It just shows you the connection that they have. Burrow's trust in him. And Jamar Chase is clutch. I mean, you know, you can say what you want about Jamar Chase and all that stuff before his rookie year about drops and everything. The guy makes big plays when the Bengals need him. You know, he's a home run hitter, if you ask me. A great read by Burrow. So 20 to 20, two seconds left in the game. That was a second and goal. Kind of like a foregone conclusion, right? That they're going to win this game 21 20. Awesome comeback story at home. Wrong. Minka Fitzpatrick, a beautiful job of designing this rush. Sometimes you recognize a, uh, <clears throat> a protection scheme for extra point. You know, uh, actually, we usually call it field goal block. We never call it extra point block because extra point block assumes that the offense is going to score a touchdown. In your team meetings and with your team, you want to call this field goal block because you're going to hold the offense to field goal opportunities. So one of the things is when you have something like this on film, normally these these uh, tight ends on the outside, they got to step down and then shoot their outside hand out so they can cover two gaps. They can cover the inside gap with their body, their knee. You're not, you're not trying to trip someone. You're not leg whipping someone, but you're putting your body into the inside gap and then using your hand to chip as much as you can of the outside rusher because the outside lane is the further run. It's the, it's the longer distance. In this case, this guy on the left does this incredibly poorly. You can see he steps out with his left foot and then shoots with his inside arm here. Totally the opposite way of, you want to, of what you want to do it. Certainly not trying to be disrespectful about, to him, but you know, a really missed opportunity for this football team to start off 1-0, uh, being the Bengals. You want and another thing. Let's get to the end zone angle. Another thing about this is why why can you do that? Why do you have to step down, secure the inside gap, and then use your hand? Or in some cases, if no one rushes on the inside, then you can step out. Why do you do that? Because everyone on the inside is interlocked their legs, so there's no inside rush lanes. Now, if this was high school or youth, where you're talking about smaller sized people, smaller bodies, you would generally have like a six inch split pre-snap, and then they would step with their inside foot to cross over behind the interior, the lineman to their inside. So they'd be stepping. Why a six-inch split so you don't shorten the edge? NFL teams typically shorten the edge, but they can get away with that because these bodies here are so massive, all right, number one. Number two, the rush on the outside, they can, they can, they feel like they're strong enough athletically and they have enough explosiveness with their tight ends to be able to get a hand on that outside rusher and impede him so it's not a straight line to the kick. It kind of has to bow out a little bit and then J back in. In this case, the left tight end does a really poor job. I'll continuously start this and restart it so you can see it. He does step with his inside foot. Uh, now that I look at it from the end zone angle, but no awareness of Minka Fitzpatrick. In my opinion, the Steelers probably had this. Either they noticed it on film study or they saw this earlier in the game and they saved this uh, block until later on. Look at how many guys are lined up to the Steelers' right, the Bengals' left. It's quite obvious where the rush is coming from. This is not like you know certain punt block situations where you can fake the rush from one side and bring it from the other. No, uh -uh, this happens too fast, especially on extra point. Beautiful play by Minka Fitzpatrick underrated football player at this point in the NFL. Everyone knows he's a very, very good player, but in this game, week one against the Bengals, he was a great player. And the Steelers needed every inch of that playmaking ability. Uh, really cool. This is a Ravens channel for real, but <clears throat> me personally, whenever I see something like that, that kind of effort, that kind of clutch activity from a guy uh, who's been in the NFL for a long time and who really, you know, to me, to me the way I look at it, he really has – elevated his career by coming to the Steelers, um, in my opinion, especially his playmaking ability. It's like since he's come to the Steelers, he's always getting pick sixes, he's always getting fumble recoveries for touchdowns or, or turning the ball over. Seemed to do a great job tackling 
in this game against the Bengals. I thought it was a beautiful example of, of hustle and never giving up. Uh, unfortunately for the Bengals, that, that, that left tight end sample, you know, didn't execute his technique very well at all. It'll be interesting to me to see if he's on that team next week, if he's on, you know, field goal or extra point uh, team next week. But uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, awesome player. Really fun video for me to try to produce. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel or if this is your first time watching um, one of my videos, please consider subscribing to the channel now. And if you really, really like this video and the way I broke down Minka Fitzpatrick's impact, then please consider sharing this video on social media to help increase its reach and exposure. Appreciate you guys for checking the video out.